Hey guys, so today we're going to answer a subscriber question and the question in question is Frederick, how do you think worker threads in specifically Node how is that going to affect languages such as Go and Java? So let's get into it. Now, the question here kinda is based on a little bit of a, well, let's just walk through it. You see, one of the things that a lot of people have argued about, say Go, for example, is that the main benefit to Go from a lot of, at least from the people who talk to me and what I can see on the internet and you know, the famous success story that Uber has switched over from Node over to Go. Although I think that this is taking a little bit out of context overall, has sparked this idea in a lot of people's minds that Go is this great experience and this great platform for making APIs. And it is absolutely a great thing Go is small, small language, has quite a lot of performance and overall I, I really enjoy working in it. But there is something that I think that we need to address a little bit here. And that is this hype and this idea that some people get into their heads that just because you have something, some aspect to your language that is what I call fairly, I'm not saying low value, but something that is fairly simple to match, that this one thing is going to be the thing that dictates whether or not something becomes adopted in the industry. And performance is an example of one such thing. Now let me explain. You see, it's very fun that there are other people out there who touch on these sorts of things that I myself, like it's something that you kind of learn from working in the industry. You, you kind of, you don't get as excited about these one dimensional features that a lot of people who are either what I like to call the fanboys or early adopters or fanatics, whatever, that they get very excited about it. And in my opinion, it has more to do with emotions than like logic. Now, worker threads, for those of you who may not know that, allows you to, in Node, fork off synchronous work that would block the main thread. And we can go into event loops and stuff of that nature, which is a little bit outside of this discussion. But the idea here is basically that this will allow Node to virtually do the same sort of parallel processing that Go does. And the thing is that this idea, and this is what I've been saying from day one, when people have been coming to me and saying that, oh, I think Go has a bigger business value than Node, or it has a bigger business value than Rust and so forth. And I kind of go, from what perspective? What's the perspective? Because from what I can see, this language and this platform offers you literally the same sort of benefits that a lot of other languages are offering you. It is another way for you to build a server, an API of some sort. And the only thing that people come to me and kind of claim is the benefit on top of this and like why well, you should pick Go over something else has to do with the performance aspect. Or some people like to use simplicity as another argument and I kind of go, well, okay, simplicity, that, yeah, sure, that can be a thing, but it's, it's uh, if you look at Ruby who, has an entire community of people claiming that that's the simplest, best used developer experience in the world. I, you see, I hope you can see my point. Simplicity is very subjective. Same thing with Java, but people claim that Java is simple. So how will worker threads affect, uh, you know, affect this? Because if you now think about it, okay, so Node.js was the biggest thing, and in many ways it's still like super, super like uh, popular and like super hyped. Now this, this language or this platform is trying to match the features of, say, Go, for example. But if we, re we really think about it, why this th idea of threading and parallel processing, we, uh, there's tons of platforms that can do this. Java can do it too. They've been able to do it for a long time. But why isn't, wh why isn't Java then, like why is Go such a threat to Java? Well, if you really look at it, look at it it's not. At this point, it's not. There's a lot of hype about the language. There's a lot of 
popularity on the internet, but the adoption rate in the industry is not going going anywhere right now. It's not taking off in some like massive, super exp exponential growth or whatever you we want to call it. And I think the same thing is going to be applied for Node. You see, the benefit that Node brought to the table had nothing to do with the fact that it was the best solution for every single problem. It has to do with that it is a very, it's, it's using JavaScript. And because JavaScript is the language of the browser, Node can basically piggyback on all of that strength, all that momentum, because it's, part, it's going to be part of every development stack as long as you have a user-facing application that is on the internet. If you're using Webpack, if you're using NPM, if you're using any of that, Node is going to be part of your ecosystem. Now, the discussion here is about whether or not Node is going to become a threat to server-side development just because it has worker threats. If you ask my honest opinion, I don't think so. I think that what's, what always happens will continue to happen. And what always happens is that people in the industry, the language developers and the platform owners, will do what they do, and they always do feature matching. Now, what is feature matching? Well, if you think about it, let's take functional programming for as a, as a great example of that, and Java. So Java 8 introduced what they define as functional programming aspect and lambda functions and all of this stuff, they started adding that stuff in. Now, Java is probably the most famous object-oriented programming language there is. So why do they add in this aspect? Well, because there's a requirement. They see, in, they see a desire from the industry to add that sort of thing in. That's exactly what Node is about as well, like adding worker threads. That's the same sort of thing. There's a requirement. And so we try to accommodate like the language developers, they try to accommodate the need. Go is doing the same thing with WebAssembly. It's not supported, like, you, and I'm pretty, that's kind of what I'm saying, guys. All the languages try to match the desires that at least make sense for them from the industry's perspective. So, what we really come down to at the end of the day comes to these subjective I mean it sounds weird but it really is subjective benefits that you can't really boil down to like it's we developers we like to think that we're so objective and that we always have like justified good reasons for making one decision over another and this that's why I think this go thing and at uber is a hilarious argument from a lot of people who don't seem to I, I honestly guys I think that we should be a little bit like just okay let's see if you can follow with me here so you're telling me that uber goes from node to go and the only reason they did that was because go is just that that more performant than node well if you actually look into it they actually only did it for a few service select services they actually posted articles about which services it, it was about in order to do parallel processing and once again you're telling me that the only thing you did you did it only for the performance so you didn't try any other technology, like it had nothing to do with employer branding, didn't have to do with the fact that you might have technical leads within the company who are at this moment very interested in Go, had nothing to do with that. It was a completely objective they had a thing, you know, they had already benchmarked doing the thing in C or C, something that is even could be in theory even more performant. That was the only thing, like they checked all the other options and just went with Go because Go is so much better. Of course not. Nobody does that. I've never seen it happen. My guess is that it had to do, had to do with quite a lot more and quite subjective things rather than that. I mean, if you want to really hard drive it, Netflix still uses Go, or sorry, uh, Node, for a lot of their microservices and their architecture. And that's a streaming service, they're processing quite a lot of data as well. And then there are companies who are using Java for the same thing. So what I want you to take away from this is that my guess is that you will simply see worker threads become another reason for using Node 
as opposed to something else. And this catch-up game where, you know, the trends, they kind of go up and they go down and everybody's just trying to match each other's features is going to continue. And I don't see adding worker threads to Node as a threat to Go. I don't see it as a threat to the other programming languages. Because at the end of the day, it's not worker threads that is going to dictate whether or not you go with Node. The thing that dictates whether or not you're going to go to, with Node has to do with a lot more subjective things. And that is true for most programming languages. Everybody has their own reason usually as to why they're picking one language over another. And it's very rarely about an objective as an, an objective thing. It has to do with preferences for the most part. And that's actually what I want to get away from. That's why I don't try to advocate one language over another all, all too much because it, as famously stated, it depends. It always depends. And if you are really honest with yourself and you really make an informed professional decision or estimation, you should be able to take a step back from your hype about Go, your hype about Node or whatever, and make the right decision for the product instead of falling victim to the trends. Have a great day.